So as a platform, um, we definitely have a lot of robustness as well as the uh, uh, versatility of this application. So the two um, most relevant and fastest growing markets we have chosen to really focus on at this point in time um, is um, really, as you said, is um, uh, to be used as an analytical platform facilitating accelerating development of cell and gene therapy. And the second part is really the oncology drug resistance. And so I can spend a little bit of time on the cell and gene therapy part to start with. So cell and gene therapy has been the transformative uh, therapeutics and that has been developing in the last decade also, but really has accumulated huge momentum in the last couple of years, primarily because of the huge technical advancement of CRISPR. Um, as you know, CRISPR can very effectively introduce genetic edits and changes into live cells. And so that type of technology um, and is really feeling really the promise of the cell and gene therapy to really fundamentally cure cancer, as well as many of the other devastating genetic diseases, whether rare or common genetic diseases that as of today, we have been only treating the symptoms, but not the cure. So cell and gene therapy holds the promise of um, ultimately eradicating these diseases where um, really a one potentially one injection for the patients, then they can actually for, for their lives, they, they can actually have the properly expressed um, genes and proteins that would cure their disease. So that's a very exciting field. Um, there is a projection that um, in the next five years, uh, half of the uh, approved drugs will actually come from the cell and gene therapy category. So that's really the ambition of the market. There's over $20 billion of investment that went into um, supporting the cell and gene therapy development just in 2020 alone. So how do we play into that space, right? Um, as exciting as the cell and gene therapy industry is, it actually needs a lot of new tools to characterize on the therapeutics. Um, the other more classical, more traditional therapeutics like small molecule, we have had a very long time to actually develop the ecosystem to support the therapeutic characterization like mass spec, like HPLC. Those are really classical technologies, but they really don't apply, unfortunately, to cell and gene therapy because now we're talking about live cell that contains changed gene, change the genome, and trying to inject that into the humans. So there's a huge amount of characterization we need to know. We need to know, are the edits happening at the right place? Uh, have we introduced off-target effect? Are there um, chromosome instabilities? And all of these things relate to safety, efficacy, potency, and sustainability of protein production. Because at the end of the day, what we inject into patients are not just a molecule, it's actually a living cell. And those cells will continue to divide, continue to change, and how to monitor that in the long term. So this, these are really big questions that really um, the whole industry is facing. And the mission bar, we really hope that with our microfluidics tool, that the platform can, can monitor at the single cell level DNA changes as well as protein changes. We just have the right fit into that market, actually help all of these sound gene therapies better understand their therapeutics, characterize them in the development phase, preclinical, clinical, and even in patient monitoring. So we can actually help accelerate all of those development efforts. And so that's one very important aspect that we're extremely excited about to be a very good enabler for that field. And the second one you mentioned is really the, um, the ongoing battle that we have had uh, with cancer. And um, as we actually have evolved our cancer therapeutics over the last decades, we've moved from just chemotherapy to targeted therapy to immunotherapy. But even of today, with the most advanced therapeutics, actually patients do go into relapse. And that occurrence actually is, the frequency is very high, right? All of us have possibly our friends or family who have passed from cancer. And most of the time is from cancer recurrence. So there is a very strong push from the scientific um, aspect of that is to try to understand why do the cancer cells come back? Um, even though they have received treatment, it seemed uh, through imaging, um, the cancers have gone away, but the cancers come back. Most of the time, is really possibly, you know, three reasons, right? One is there is actually a very rare cell population or those clones that potentially have a different mutation than we thought the bulk cancer had. We just didn't know. 
we didn't have tools that had the level of sensitivity to detect the very rare clones. And it is those rare clones that can survive the initial treatment and they can come back. And so that's one possibility. The second is that the, the cancer cells can continue to mutate. Just like COVID, right? There is um, the, the new variants, right? Through the therapy itself, there can be new mutations that actually the cells can adapt, can, 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 can um, uh, harbor, and so they become resistant, right? It's like adaptation um, to the therapeutic treatment. And then there's a third, there's a microenvironment, our own immune system, and there may be other uh, physical barriers that are preventing the cancers being treated. All of this, if we actually have the tool like tapestry, where we can understand how the sensitivity to isolate the rare cells that have a different mutation to understand that early on. If we can continue to monitor the patients to actually know what new mutations that are being harbored, what if we have the tool to understand our immune system at the single cell level to know how they're responding uh, or not responding to the therapies like immunotherapy. And so that's the tool, but tapestry has the power to understand the mutations at DNA level, to understand um, the the uh, the therapeutics, and so um, we're very excited to be able to um, deploy our platform and really help the drug companies to better characterize and understand drug resistance. At the end of the day, you know that can be um, really good news for for really the patients uh, to be able to understand if there may be a different course of treatment that are really personalized, and so personalized not at the patient level, but actually personalize the treatment at the clone level. And so that's where we can bring, hopefully change the trajectory of, um, of their health and recovery. Mm-hmm.